So what 24 inch iMac do I recommend for about 90% of all users? I'm gonna show you. All right, welcome back to my channel. So today what I wanted to do is let me just go ahead and clearly state what I'm gonna be doing in this video. I'm gonna be showing you the model you should buy if you're looking at a 24 inch iMac right now. Now, I usually always go and say buy the base model. I've had videos like this on all these other different systems. And I have reasons for that, but in this case, it's gonna be slightly different. So I wanna definitely show people maybe the model you might wanna choose here, so stay tuned for that. So I'm gonna show you the key differences in the models, and then I'm gonna show you some key kind of like benchmarks and stuff. It should be hopefully not too long of a video. I'm just gonna go through it and just let you know the differences between these two, and then ultimately what I think, and you'll, you'll know right away what I think. Stay tuned, let's get into the video. I hope this helps people if you're looking to buy that 24 inch iMac, let's go. All right, I'm gonna share my screen here in a second, but right now they have incredible deals on the 24 inch base model iMac and also the one that's a step up, it's the tier up. If you come over here and look at my screen, I'm sharing it right here. Right now they have the base model, the 24 inch iMac, it's only $1,199. So it's a, you know, $100 off, which is great. Comes with the you know, eight core CPU, but only a seven core GPU. And then it has uh, 256 gigs of, of uh, SSD space and the eight gigs of RAM. So that's the base model there. Now the problem with this is when you buy this, well, I'll get into that in a second. So that's the base model. The second one I'll show you here is gonna be, this is the one that I'm probably gonna recommend everyone. And I want you to stay through the whole video to tell you, I mean, I'm gonna give you reasons why. This next one is all the way down to 1349 right now on Amazon. I'll have links to this in the description. And this is over 150 bucks off right now, so it's a really good deal. So again, the only difference between this one and the other one is a couple, and I'll get into that right now. So this one is basically the same chip, M1 chip, eight core CPU, but it's got the eight core GPU as well, so you get one more core in the GPU. It's got the eight gigs of RAM and the 256 SSD, which we'll get into later. They're, they're the same, are they the same speed? We'll get into that as well. The main differences here are gonna be some differences that are pretty key, so let me go ahead and get into those now, and then I'm gonna go through the benchmarks. All right, I just disclosed it. I actually recommend the one that you saw there, the one that's basically $13.49. If you can pick it up for somewhere around that cost, it really changes things. The main differences are, you know, the, the base model, the one that's only $11.99, it only comes with two USB, uh, two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports, but the more expensive one for $13.49 comes with four of them. So you get two more of the ports there. You also get on the keyboard, the cheaper one does not come with Touch ID, and you get the keyboard with Touch ID on this more expensive one. So already we're looking at some cost differences there. Third thing is, is the GPU. You get seven cores on the cheap one, you get eight cores on the more expensive one, and we're gonna get into that in a second, why that's important. Um, and then let me just see if there's anything else. There is a couple other things here. Um, Ethernet, you don't get an Ethernet, physical Ethernet plug in the cheap one, the 1199 one, but the 1350 one, you do get that Ethernet plug, so that's a huge advantage there as well. And, and again, these things are adding up with cost, and you can see why I'm gonna recommend it, but let's get to performance in a couple seconds. One thing that they disclose too is the one that's the cheapest model only comes with one fan and one kind of heat pipe. And the one that's 14, I guess it's now down to 1349, but it's that second tier up, comes with two fans and it has multiple heat pipes. So is that gonna make a difference on performance? I mean, that's really what we wanna talk about. Now, the reason I recommend this for 1349 is the storage. Let's get into storage. Now, a lot of people are gonna say that's not enough storage. Well, you know, if we go to Apple's website and we take a look at it, you know, they want, what is it here? They want about 200 bucks for 512 gigabytes. You know, that's, that's gonna be a, a, you know, is that worth it? But when you get up to one terabyte, they want another $400. I don't think it's really recommended. What I think you should do is just, and I've, I've had a mon many videos like this before, what I recommend doing is just going with something like, you know, here's a T7, 500 gigabyte SSD. It's up to 1,050 megabytes per second. So really fast, it's actually faster than the standard ones. It's only $77. So that's $77 versus 200. If you go up to a terabyte, it gets even bigger. You can get the T7 here, one terabyte for $109.99 and Apple wants 400. So I just move, like I showed you before, move my file, move, you know, I move like I, I moving those type of things onto that and I just work right off of that fast drive. It's over, you know, a thousand megabytes per second as well on those. And if you need something small and you just wanna buy something, this one's actually got really good reviews. This is called an Oracle 256. Look how small this is. You can see a picture here of it. But basically, if you wanna go travel, go to the coffee shop and you need extra space, this one's really good, 79 bucks only. I'll have links to this one as well. If you go down to the bottom, um, a lot of people did tests on this and things like that. And you can see in these tests that, you know, when they're using USB-C, you get over a thousand megabytes per second on this little device here. It's not like the, the other ones that, you know, they never push their, their weight. 
And then you get the 458 if you use the USB connection because that's a USB-A connection, I'm sorry, not the USB-C. So you do get a slower speed there. But obviously all Macs now have USB-C, so why not get that? So anyways, that's my recommendation to add the storage. Now let's get into the benchmarks here and then we're going to kind of wrap this up. But let me show you why. what's the real reason you want to pick that 1349 one up instead of the base model. All right, so the very first test is going to be Geekbench 5 between these two. So this is, again, this is between the cheaper model and the little bit more expensive model, the one up. So the cheaper model is going to come at 1748 on single core and 7582 on multi-core. So there's your scores really fast. There's not going to be much of a difference here between the two, really, because this is just testing CPU and they've got the same CPU. So if you look at the other side, it's got 1749 for the single core, 760. 31 for the multi-core. Slight differences, maybe because of the cooling and stuff, very, very slight there. That's what we expected. All right, next one is Geekbench 5 Metal Test. This is gonna test more of the graphics capability with that extra core. So if you look over here, it's 19873 on the cheap version. Really good score. But if you go over here, we get about an eight or 9% difference. We get a 21527 score on the eight core GPU model or the more expensive one. So again, there's a difference there of about eight or 10% if you're like a video editor or something like that. Plus it's just gonna help overall. The next thing I wanna test is the black magic. So in the past, a lot of black magic uh, you know, a lot of Apple usually sold different versions of the same computer and the higher ones had faster hard drives and then the slower ones. So let's go ahead and do a test. What I got was 2330 megabytes per second on the writes, 2701 on the reads, that's for the cheaper one. And if we look over at the other side, there's really no difference, 2299 and 2740. So no difference, that's just between the program testing it and stuff. All right, the next test is gonna be 3D Wildlife Extreme. This is the unlimited mode for 4K on the Mac. So let's go ahead. So again, this is gonna test more of this, the GPU, so this should make a little difference. The score of 4428 on the cheaper one and 26.3 frames per second. And the other one over here, which is the more expensive one, it's 49.30 and 29.6. Uh, so it's about 11% difference there. So again, not huge, but it's 11% and we're getting all those other features added for that little bit of extra cost. All right, now the fans are a big thing here, especially if you're like, you know, adverse to noise and stuff. So again, the cheaper one only comes with one fan and one, kind of one heat pipe. The more expensive one comes with two fans. And that's a big thing. A lot of people, they, Apple didn't even tell you that. And it comes with multiple heat pipes. So I'm just looking here. So we ran a test, really long test using that 3D Mark, uh, 3D Wildfire Extreme. And it was basically really taxing on everything. So, you know, obviously the temperature ramped up. On the cheaper version, it looks like we got it between 87 degrees C and 95 degrees C. And the fans are running like 90 to 100%, so really loud. On the version that's more expensive, we only went from 70C around to 90C. So we had a it was quite a bit cooler in a lot of cases, especially in the beginning, in like the first couple minutes, it was way cooler. And then finally, the, the, span, the, the both fans only got up to about 50%, and you could barely hear them versus the actual single fan, which was way louder. So if you're averse to noise and stuff, it's actually better to get the one with two fans, believe it or not, because they're actually quieter because they run at a slower speed. And then finally, R23. So the other stuff was kind of testing GPU and stuff. Uh, and this is gonna be more of a CPU test, but we're gonna run it in a sense where it kind of taxes you know, the, the, the system so that maybe the cooling will kick in and make some differences here. So this test should show that if it's gonna make a difference on the CPU as well as the GPU. So the R23, again, Cinebench R23 is for CPU. We scored a 7002 on the seven core a GPU, which is the cheaper version. And then finally, the 7722. So we scored like an 11% better on the more expensive version again for R23, and that's due to the fans kicking in and helping this thing cool down. There was no thermal throttling. So that's, you know, obviously it's, it's plain as day right there. You're gonna get that 10 or 11% on a lot of things. Then you're also gonna be getting stuff like I just talked about. You're gonna be getting the two extra ports. You're gonna be getting, let's think about this for a second. Uh, you're gonna be getting the, uh, the ethernet ports as well, which is gonna basically be a, a wired connection that you get, which you don't have to buy it extra before. And uh, you're gonna get the keyboard that's got the touch ID on it as well. So you're gonna get a bunch of things here that's gonna really make a big difference on the cost of this. If you know, it's only, what is it, you know, 150 bucks more. And if you buy all that stuff, plus you get the performance increases, plus you get the cooling better, you know, better cooling, better noise levels, all that kind of stuff. So. In this rare case, I'm gonna probably recommend going with the second tier up instead of the base model, getting the extra drive if you need to on the external drives and using that for storage for you know things that really need a lot of storage. 
you can save a lot of money there as well. So again, I broke kind of out of the mold here, but I think this is, you know, makes a lot of sense. I'm not sure what you can get these things for in Europe and stuff. In the United States on Amazon, I'll have links to all this stuff. Those are great pricing, obviously subject to change when you watch this, they're all over the place. But if you can get them for that 1350, that's an incredible price for that machine with all the extras and all the add-ons. I highly recommend that's the one you go for. I hope you guys like these videos and I'm gonna wrap it up here. It's about as much as I can say here. So we'll talk to everybody soon. Have a great day in these crazy times. We'll talk to everyone. Peace.